Hey guys, RC here. We are back for our season opener today. Wanted to catch you up on transfer news. We've got some huge World Cup news, uh, but let's take a quick look at the schedule here. Here's the friendlies. We mentioned last episode in the transfer special that we won some silverware winning the friendly cup and then a 3-1 win over Sparta in our senior affiliate friendly, 7-1 over Linden, and a 3-0 clean sheet over Nancy. And NEC, we beat 5-1. Uh, Ludinho Vicario with a hat trick in that one. And uh, Gert, Gert Tielemans is one of our young players that's come up through the ranks a little bit. Uh, he got a goal, and Vicario again with five goals in that uh, Linden uh, 7 1 dismantling. So don't take a look at the top or you'll spoil this. Don't take a look at the right side either. Uh, <laughs> uh, group one, Spain and Cameroon advanced. Argentina and Italy advanced in group B. Costa Rica stayed behind. Germany and Algeria get, a, get in ahead of Canada, who failed to pick up a point. The Netherlands and Tunisia get ahead over Paraguay. England and the condo, the condo. England had a condo. The Congo over Qatar, Ukraine and Ghana uh, getting in over Iran, uh, Scotland and Ecuador over the Arab Emirates, Chile and Ireland over Senegal, France and Japan over Guinea, Austria, South Korea over Honduras, Morocco, Australia over Slovakia, Belgium, Colombia over Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Hungary, and Mexico fails to get any points. A little bit of a shocker there. Uruguay and Bosnia-Herzegovina getting in over South Africa. The Czech Republic and the United States over Uzbekistan. Croatia and Nigeria getting in over Curacao. One of our players playing for Curacao. They fail to garner any points. Going into the second round, Argentina beats Cameroon 3-1. Germany clean sheet over Tunisia. Netherlands 2-0 over Algeria. England with a 1-0 scraper over Ghana. Ukraine 3-0 over the Congo. Scotland beating Ireland 5-1. Chile over Ecuador 3-0. France with a 2-0 clean sheet over South Korea. Austria 3-2 over Japan. Colombia needs extra time to beat Morocco 2-1. Belgium getting past the Aussies 2-0. Bosnia goes to penalties and stuns Brazil. Uruguay beats Hungary on penalties. Czech Republic 3-1 over Nigeria. And Croatia defeats the United States, ending their title hopes. Going into the third round, it's Italy getting through over the Netherlands. Germany beating Argentina. England showing some muscle. 3-0 over Chile, Ukraine over Scotland, France over Belgium, Austria over Colombia. Bosnia goes to penalties again, beating Croatia, kind of another shocker, and the Czech Republic over Uruguay in the third round. Going into the quarterfinals, Italy beats Ukraine 2-1. England crushes Germany 7-0. Would you have believed that? France has to go to penalties to beat the Czech Republic. And Bosnia goes extra time this time. 3-1 winners over Austria. Going into the semis, it's Bosnia beating Italy. Another stunner, 2-0. And England getting past France, 1-0. I think Bosnia's got to be the surprise. Bosnia-Herzegovina has to be the surprise. France goes to extra time. 3-2 winners over Italy. And in the final... England takes care of Bosnia-Herzegovina 4-1 to win the World Cup. Second time in a row. So, 1966, no more. They've actually won it four times this century, since the turn of the century. Yep. So that is pretty astounding. Uh, I guess we don't go back to 1966 anymore, so that's interesting. But uh, 2026, 2034, two years later, then they go three World Cups without a title. They win it again in 2050, the first year of our save, and now again in 2054. Very, very interesting. Just to take a look at the squad. Abbas Mohammed up top. Uh, he plays for Arsenal, valued at $98 million. One goal, four assists in four matches in the World Cup. 
We've got Primus, Gills, Harvey, Oaks, Keeling. Of course, all these are new gen names, so those don't mean anything. But still, there is hope for the future. Let's get you caught up on our transfers. Uh, as much as little as we had done coming into this, uh, we've been very busy. So let's just kind of recap. I think there's a couple in here. Uh, Brandon Slotboom goes to Murakon uh, Moroskin. I think that's how you pronounce it. We paid two and a half for him a couple of years ago, getting him from FC Emmen. He goes to Muriscon in Pro League A. I believe that's Belgium. Yep. And uh, it says it right there, RC, $2 million. Um, so we clear out a little bit in the midfield, add a little bit to the coffers. Alcini Diallo, they, uh, Charleroi comes in and meets his release clause of $8.5 million. They originally came in with a bid of like, uh, like three and a half million, which was you know close to four million. It was right around his value, but I said no, and um, you know didn't really want to lose him. But they met his release clause, so he leaves and brings us a chunk of change. Uh, Dylan Vervecki uh, goes off for two hundred fifteen thousand. Couple of loan guys, uh, Anachik. We finally moved him on. They met his release clause of a million and a half. And while I wasn't unhappy with him, and we paid two million for him, so I'm not happy about that. But he just was not geared up for the Arita VC. I don't think 29 matches, 57 goals allowed. I mean, he played well, 6.97 that year. But man, I just you know. Two goals a match and only a handful of clean sheets. Just uh, didn't see keeping him around. We upgraded last year. So, anyway, uh, another loan. Uh, Furtot, yeah, I don't know. This dude, who's one of our young players, two and a half star potential, uh, he goes off for 22000 It'll probably go up to seventy two. We should get all of that. I don't really take any really weird stuff. Uh, international goals and stuff like that. This is usually after 10 or 50 league games and maybe maybe some league goal scoring stuff if, at the worst. Uh, Bruner goes off on loan. Bernard Hart, uh, Terhart Romney goes for 550000 to Eindhoven and Vanderhorst goes off on loan to Eindhoven. I was thinking about giving him some playing time this year, just um, 18 years old, but and and he's got really good potential, but just you know, just didn't see a lot there. And we it was about five times his value, so he was valued like at ninety seven thousand. So it was a pretty decent return. On the flip side, we have made some moves as of late with some of the incoming money, and of course some of the incoming departures. So we bring on Lander Deporter on a free. Uh, he is a center back, 17 years old, four-star potential, and he needs to develop, but he is a uh, he's a player for the future. He came out of Belgium's first division uh, system, so he'll be somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, Elvis Barashek from Sibenik, uh, uh, $600,000 potentially. He is uh, both feet. I think we looked at him already, but left and right. Uh, he, so he can play on both sides. Four and a half star potential. Uh, he was sold to Sibenik for 68000 coming out of the Croatia system with uh, Ver Verizden. And we pick him up for a half million. I think there's something there. I think he'll probably play a good bit. Uh, Elliot Laval cost us 575000 from Circle Bruges. And he's 26 years old, three and a half star, maxed out pretty much. But, you know, we needed another midfielder. We got the eight and a half million. So, you know, we didn't pay all of it out. And I think we got a well-rounded player. He can play out on the wing with his crossing. He's got great passing to be a playmaker in that midfield spot. So look for him to be a big contributor this year. And again, we sold Diallo for eight and a half and we paid 575,000 for him. Then we signed David Sebastian for 8,000 from Puskas Academia, maybe. Uh, six foot center back. He can already fill in back there. 
two-star current, five-star potential. We've got him listed for loan, uh, hoping to loan him out, but uh, he has come up through the hungry ranks, and uh, I think he's a pretty good signing. More for the future, and Mikhailo Kuz Kuz yeah, Kuznets Kuznetsov from Moropol, up to 1.6 million. Uh, he is a big winger and right-footed only, three and a half star potential. Very good physicals, pretty well-rounded, and again, I think he can be a uh, a winger on that side, and I. Think he is going to probably replace Quazy potentially. We have Elliot Laval out there, but again, I see him more in the central mid. Hard to say though. This is the tactic I've been playing this year. It's a four-two-three-one. Uh, all of our strikers up top are pretty evenly matched. Um, I think if we look at potential here. Problem is, Olivier's not a finisher, so we're going to pull him out of there. Uh, so, Vicario, that's our Curacao World Cup veteran. He's the one I really want to play. He's got pretty decent composure, decision-making, uh, work rate. I want to give him a big run. He had some injury problems last year, but that's, I think, where we're going to go. Uh, Olivier probably slots in uh, into that number 10 spot, Laval. Uh, could play there. Um, we're looking at Vogel, Sheatol on the left side. Tielemans, Quazy, Laval on the right. Again, this is the potential. Tielemans looks pretty solid, and I think he's 18. We need to start playing him to help him see this potential. So I want to give him a lot of game time this year. Uh, we could play him in the central mid. Uh, he could be a Mazala. He's got very good passing and, you know, not not so much in finishing. But he could play any of those central mid roles for us there. And you can see he's played uh, five of our friendlies. He's playing well. He's got a goal. So we'll have to find a spot for him. Uh, I think midfield is going to be the real one that we're going to have to look at. Uh, based on potential, it's Sakalo, Laval, Olivier. Sakalo has very good marking and everything. He's more of a defensive player. Uh, so not sure exactly how that's going to work. And, you know, we need to look at these new guys coming in. Uh, Jegu, we had an offer on him, accepted it. He turned it down, and uh, we brought in Elena. So we've got a couple of guys outside. Natev and Gerber are back, Banachek, and uh, Samir is a 17-year-old that uh, we paid 900000 for this year that we looked at, and he's going to be in the mix back there. Uh, Banachek, Elena, Nemeth, another player we got an offer on, accepted it, and he rejected the contract. And we've got Case and Blom in the goal. Case, again, has asked to be transfer listed. Blom is still happy to be a backup. So I think we start Case, hopefully develop him, Get get him up where we can get you know a good six to ten million dollar payday like we did with Viral. That's the hope. So let's get into it. We're opening up with Sparta, who we just beat in a friendly. I know that doesn't mean anything. All right, we're gonna go with uh, Chris Natumba up top, Vogel on the left, Oliver and Olivier in the number ten, Quazy on the right, Sakalo and Laval in that midfield pairing. Jegu, Samir, Neteb, and Barisic on the back line, and Case. So, a couple of new guys. Uh, Samir, I want to double check. Yeah, you're not a passer. So, we're going to drop, move you to a central defender. And you can pass, so we'll leave you there. Uh, that moves Sheatol to the bench. Uh, Vicario, actually, uh, Natumba. I'm going to put Vicario in that number 10. I want him on the pitch. And I think I like Natumba with his finishing. He's got pace. Concentration's not great. But Vicario's a guy I want on the pitch every game. So let's go with that. We need one squad number. It's going to be to Kuznetsov, something like that. He pulls number 14 out of the dirty clothes hamper. And so what do you guys, I know a lot of you guys are English or, you know, from Europe. 
what do you guys think about the uh, about England winning back to back World Cups? That's pretty crazy. I've never seen that in any version of Football Manager. So there there is some hope in the future. Uh, I do need to, yeah, we've got extended highlights. I've got them sped up. Match speed during text only. Let's max that out. All right. All right, so there's some ball movement. New tactic again that we're we're trying out this year. All right, we've got to throw Jegu into the box. There's a header, and it's in Chris Natumba, his first goal of the season. That gets us off the mark, and we're up 1-0 in the sixth minute. And it is good to have that first goal off of it. So he beats the keeper to the ball, puts it in the net, and that has got to feel good for our fans that have made the trip here to Sparta Rotterdam. Vogel lays it off to Sakulu, Sakolo, Sakalo. Dangerous ball up. Nothing really happens there, and we lose control. Gain it back. Quick movement. Oh, it's tackled away, and I might have to rethink him. I liked him. He played a lot last year, and I know I was pretty happy with him in... in the first season, but every time I watch him closely, we just, he looks like he struggles. We've got the possession. They've got the shot advantage. Jegu into the box again. And, you know, we looked really good during the friendlies, but, of course, those are teams that we should outmatch, right? Oh, there's a ball in, and Vogel takes a crack at it. I have not played much of a one-striker system in FM21. Uh, of course, Lelugio plays that pretty regularly. So it can't be a horrible thing, right? But you have to... You just have to get it right, I think. And I don't know if I can get it right. There's one out to Vogel. And the keeper. Oh, man, that was right into his hands. Probably not the best finish. That's lumped into the box. Lucario chasing it down, but can't do anything there. He's playing a 6-8. I'd like to see him getting a little more involved. And again, I'm not sure about that number 10. I'm, uh, I'd almost rather go with a defensive mid, but then, you know, then I'm really stuck with who, I, who I'm putting in there. Uh, let's take a look at the tactic. You know what? Natumba can play back there. Let's just swap those two guys just to see what happens, right? Ogle's playing okay. Quasi, I'm going to pull him off. Let's put Telemans on there. And Telemans, Telemans is more of a true winger. Let's put him winger support. Vogel, let's make him an inverted winger. He's right-footed, so we want him cutting in hard. Uh, do I want to move Sakalo? I'm going to move him to a defender. Central mid, still his best position. And we'll make Laval a playmaker. Try to take more advantage of his passing skill. So we'll just tweak those positions a little bit. Geert Tielemans is going to make his debut. All right, they make an advance up the left. So, you know, playing tough. Can't really be disappointed. We've got the lead, but anxious. Oh, he makes Case go up and punch it over. Okay. Just really, really want to see something from us here, you know? Need to see a little more. Need to see something pr productive. 
Let's encourage Jay Goof with a throw right from the corner. And there's a header, but it goes over. That was not so great. All right, we've got some guys starting to lose their fitness for the match. But we're going to run. I, I, I traditionally go all the way to the 60th minute. All right, now we are getting deep in. Let's see. Um, morale quite poor. Wow. Apprehensive. He's not playing horrible. Samir's playing a seven, so that's really good for the youngster. All right, let's pull Jegu off. We'll put Vandergoes on for him. And let's bring Natumba back up for Vicario. It says to bring Stretzlov in there, but he's more, he's a right. What we could do, no, nah, we don't want to do that. Hossick is one of our young players. He's got a 13 finishing. Let's get, I, I don't think he's played for us yet. I could be wrong, but let's bring him in. All right, let's demand more. Come on. All right, I want to go in real quick. We want time wasting. Do that. Let's play for set pieces. We'll regroup on the counter. Try to avoid some yellow cards down the stretch here. All right. They come back with a highlight. Hopefully that is not <laughs> something I will regret. Hey, it's Chick-fil-A. Remember him from last season? A lot of movement there. Good block by Barisic. Nobody on him, though, and he skies that effort. Brinson, that is good. Let's ask him to focus down the stretch here. Vander goes, gets a highlight towards the keeper. It's knocked away. Three minutes, and it'll be nice. There it is. We pull three points out of the first match. Got to be happy with that. Uh, Nateb played a 7-5, as did Samir. Remember, he's 17 years old, 6 feet tall. Not the tallest, but very good match. Barisic, a 7-1. Tielemans, you know, that's his debut. Vogel did all right. Hossick, not too bad off the bench. Vicario could have done better. Quasi. Quazy really needs to step it up because he's going to lose his spot most definitely. Uh, I'm going to say outstretched arms, a good win. And that puts us up into the top here. So we're only going to have the one match today, no highlights. Wanted to do the season opener for you guys. And with the uh, transfers and everything, you know, that took a little while. Uh, Barisic makes his debut. Samir... Fitness concern. Well, that's his first game for us. What's he been doing? Oh, he just came back from international duty. All right. Well, I'm not going to rest him, but I'll I'll give him a couple of matches off. So we'll come back in pretty short order. Uh, let's look at uh, maybe uh, PSV. I mean, I hate watching those guys all the time. Tell you what, let's come back for some AZ highlights and RKC uh, for the match. We'll do that next episode. So we'll get a couple more matches here, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump right back in, and then we'll take a little bit longer run uh, down maybe into late October, early November. See how that goes. Guys, hit that like button for me. Subscribe, especially if you're new, and thank you so much. And if you have any input on the transfers, let me know who's going to make an impact for us. And uh, what do you think I should do in my keeper situation? Do I bench the guy that has asked for a transfer request? Or do I keep playing him to try to keep his value, to build his value? Because he's still young. He's only 17. All right. Well, that's a future problem. So we'll take care and we'll see you later. Bye.